For this exercise we're going to be measuring a series of heights or elevations from three different markers. There's a typical marker at my feet here, there's one about 30 metres to my right and there's one at about 30 metres to my left. To start us off I'm going to set up my instruments which is going to be an automatic level or a dumper level halfway between the first and second markers and we're going to use a staff to get the heights or elevations. So I need to set my instruments up now. To set this level, once this is set level, it views in a horizontal line. Always, never looks up, never looks down, it's horizontal. It's in the crosshairs, some people may have difficulty in seeing what's happening. Might be a good idea to put a white sheet of paper, clipboard or your hand even, just a few centimetres in front of the lens to give you a blank canvas and then you turn this bezel round and you can see the crosshairs and nothing else in the background. They're focused for my eyes now. The staff, which I will now do. Once I've sighted the staff down the fella, I can look through the viewfinder and focus the crosshairs and the overall distance. I now have a reading of that staff of 1.716, which I'm going to record as my backstop. Hello everyone, my name is Andreas Lampropoulos and I'm a principal lecturer in civil engineering here at the University of Brighton. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the Structures Lab. My name is Matthew Leake. I'm the technician uh, for this laboratory and today we're going to be testing uh, your concrete frames. Thank you Matt. So what we will do today, we will test four frames. All the frames are made of reinforced concrete. So we have uh, concrete and we have various types of steel bars inside. What we have done in all the four specimens, we have examined different types of reinforcement and different dimensions. And what we will do, we will apply a load in the middle of the span and we will see the different type of failures and the different load capacity of the examined frames. And the task is to understand why we had this type of failures and how the different types of reinforcement affect the maximum load capacity. We will start with the first frame. So in this case, we can see here the first crack. That was around 45 kilonewtons. Is in the middle of the span vertical but we have had nearly 10 millimeters of displacement mm -hmm. so uh, so the maximum load that we had seen maximum load while we were still in a linear portion of this graph was around about 100 kilonewtons just as we were speaking then it began to drop off so we've dropped from 105 down to 90 kilonewtons unfortunately just off the camera here you can't see these cracks that have appeared on the edge here mm -hmm. But and you can also hear the, the concrete cracking and bits falling off of it. The load is dropping a lot. Yeah. And there is a crack opening at this point. And now it has considered that the space has failed. Yeah. Hello, welcome back to the Structures Lab and today we're going to be doing a three-point loading test on timber and steel and to do that we're going to be using another universal testing machine, this time um, from Controls. So this here is our hydraulic pump and controller and that operates our RAM and we've got this, this set up into a uh, three-point bending test. We've set it for 900 millimetres so if we have a look at our timber sample that we're going to be using We've got 900 millimetres marked up on here. Uh, so when we put this down onto the, uh, onto the uh, testing machine, 
We're going to have one support there, one support here, and we're going to be loading it in the middle. So just explaining a little bit about the graph, it's this, this top graph here, and we've got load versus displacement. So the third LVDT, which is LVDT channel seven, and load is on channel two. and there's a really rather satisfying failure. So for today's experiment, we're gonna be using our small flume. Uh, it's made by Gunn in Hamburg in Germany. And before we start today's experiment, I'm just gonna go through very quickly um, the operations and, and how it actually works. So over there, we've got our jack, so we can raise and lower the incline of the flume itself. Um, down here we've got a small pump which pumps water from our reservoir through this pipework into our flow meter through our control valve and then along this pipework that runs at the back of the flume into the hopper and then through the flume itself and discharges back into the reservoir again.